Supermoon 2017. Hey there, stargazers. I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plot Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. And I'm Dean Regis, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. We're here to help you find your way around the sky. Well, James, it's almost that time again. What time is that? Time for the gun show? No, no, no. Put those away. Put those away. It's time for the Supermoon Phenomenon. Oh, right. For the past few years, the media has hyped the fact that the moon changes its distance from us and therefore its size in the sky. And when you combine a full moon on the night it is closest to us for the year, you get a super moon. Now, people really seem to love when this occurs. They sit outside on a blanket or lawn chair, face east, and watch the big moon rise. And this year, it'll happen on the night of December 3rd. But is a super moon that super to behold? Let's show you. Okay, we have our sky set for December 1st facing east at 7 p.m. The moon has left its first quarter phase and is now a waxing gibbous. When the moon is waxing, that means each day more of the lunar surface will appear lit to us on Earth until the full moon on December 3rd. But on December 1st, the moon will be about as high as the Seven Sisters star cluster that's over to the left. But if we move forward one night at the same time of night at 7 p.m., the moon will have shifted closer to the stars of Taurus the bull. You can usually recognize Taurus by the five stars in a V shape that make up his face. The brightest star in the V is the bullseye, bright orange Aldebaran. I said you can usually find Taurus this way, but that big bright moon might make it tough to see the fainter stars. That brings us to December 3rd, the night of the supermoon. Hmm. Did you notice any big change in the size of the moon between December 1st and now? I definitely didn't. I think we better fly up there and take a closer look at this so-called supermoon. Here's the zoomed in view of the moon from December 1st. At this point, the moon is about 223,000 miles from us. Let's skip ahead to December 2nd. The moon is getting fuller and slightly closer to us and now is less than 222,000 miles away. And on the supermoon night of December 3rd, here is the full moon at only 221,000 miles from Earth. That's hardly a super difference. But what if we compare a supermoon to a puny moon, a full moon that is farthest from the Earth? The next puniest full moon will be on July 27th, 2018. If we put this puny moon next to this year's supermoon, well, now that's a noticeable difference. The puny moon is over 251,000 miles away. That's 30,000 miles farther than the 2017 supermoon. This makes the diameter of our supermoon appear 14% larger than the puny moon and, in total, makes the surface area 30% larger. So a supermoon is significantly brighter than your average full moon. You might not be able to detect the changes day to day, but they are real. The best time to see the supermoon in all its glory is just as it rises. Now we're facing east at 6.30 p.m. on December 3rd. It may not be completely dark outside, so you might have trouble finding the moon right on the horizon. But as the sun sets below the western horizon, you'll start to see the biggest full moon of the year creep above the eastern horizon. The moon always looks larger to us when it's near the horizon. That's called the moon illusion, but that's a topic for another show. If it's cloudy on December 3rd, never fear. The very next day, December 4th, the moon will be almost exactly as close as it was on December 3rd. In fact, it'll be less than 1% farther, so you won't be able to tell the difference. It won't be the fullest moon or the superest, but you can definitely go outside and howl at it. <laughs> so bundle up, get some friends and family together, and sit outside to watch the supermoon rise on December 3rd. In other words, keep, keep looking, looking up. up.